Hey, Ute fans, you're watching The Extra Point, brought to you by the Ken Garf Scholarship Club and presented by UteFans.net. Mm -hmm. Please check us out on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Apple Music, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Welcome back to The Extra Point. I'm joined by Freedom Bowl MVP, Mr. Cal Beck, and Poinsettia Bowl MVP, Mr. Jordan Wynn. How are you guys doing today? I'm great. Great day to be a Ute. Always. Like the backdrop. We've upgraded. We've upgraded Massive, quite a bit. massive upgrade. Best business office you can have. Yep. So, obviously, we have our spring game yesterday. It was highly anticipated. And the biggest question marks, according to Coach Andy Ludwig, were the depth at the wide receiver position and the depth of the quarterback position, who is going to be number two. So, Jordan, what's your takeaway as far as the quarterback production in the spring game? Yeah, I think um, anytime you, you try to you know grab too much out of the spring game, it's probably a reach. The defense can only play really one coverage. But uh, I think both Brandon and Nate showed they're both capable. You also have Bryson coming back again. So, in terms of depth, I think we're in a good position. I know they've mentioned they might look into the portal as well. So, uh, in my mind, the big question mark is, is Cam going to be ready or not? And Cal, what do you think about the wide receiver depth? What's going on in that core of players? You know, we, we are extremely deep at the wide receiver, and it's a lot of underclassmen, freshmen, redshirt freshmen. You didn't see a lot of the number ones go yesterday, like Jordan had mentioned. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how the timing works out if Cam, when Cam does return to the to the roster. But after yesterday, you've got, you know, Parks has been money, uh, catching his balls and making good plays vertically and getting wide open shots to make plays. Uh, we've got... A lot of wide receivers that have that potential, that trap word I don't like to use. Once mm. Matthews was compared by Whittingham to Britton Covey, the world seemed to go crazy for 24 hours. But I think the important thing is, is that the coaches continually mentioned we need production. And I think that that equates and boils down to yards after catch. Not just catching the Yuck. ball, but making something happen in a Yasmin type of sense. Um, hard to bring down and developing and getting those extra yards. It'll be fun to see those kids that step up and develop when given more opportunities come fall ball. Jordan, what do you think about our defense? I mean, we're pretty stout as usual. Yeah. What do you think we're looking at in this 2023 squad? Yeah, I mean, I think the defense is never really a big question mark with a with a Whittingham led team. Obviously, I think the 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 big hole is just filling Clark Phillips. Uh, the amount of production, interceptions, pick sixes that he was able to to have last year. Again, everything I hear, read, and see is that we're going to be just fine and is status quo for a, a typical Utah football team. So we've got a pretty stacked Pac-12. Going into this season. Incredibly. Uh, we've got Coach Dion in Colorado. We've got USC looking to make a big impact, which I'm sure they will. They'll probably be better than they were last year. Isn't that what we're anticipating? I don't know. They didn't change anything on the defensive staff. So other than they hired Cliff on offense, they already have the two best football minds potentially in college football now, Cliff and Lincoln. Yeah. But they didn't do anything on defense. So, And that was their big Achilles heel, right? <laughs> I mean, that's I mean, their problem. Their yeah. issue isn't how many times they score. It's who can they stop. Cal, what's your takeaway? Uh, from the defense, our defense, number one calling card is physicality, and I saw that with a lot of downhill football. The pads were popping in the chews, were loud on the sidelines. There were some forced turnovers and some smart IQ picks by some DBs that capitalized on little mistakes that the quarterback seemed to be making. There was a scumble, a scoop and score. There was a, a forced fumble. There was intensity, which we want to see on our defensive play uh, from our defensive players. Our defense has got more layers than Andy's suit. Uh, it's hard to determine the defensive line because, like you said, there's no blitzing allowed, but we had linebacker play and defensive back play that showed us a lot of great um, physicality. And one thing that I didn't notice in the game was a lot of not a lot of 50-50 balls, downfield, stretch the zone, vertical routes. We don't throw that a lot in our offense, but that's one thing I've always thought our offense should try to incorporate more with Vele being as tall as he is, yeah. and I want to see our DBs respond to that as well. But we didn't see that yesterday. Overall, defensively, we're looking good. And speaking of defense, in a second, we're going to cut to a segment with Karene Reed, an all-conference Pac-12 linebacker for the Utah Utes. We'll be right back. The UFans.net community would like to take a moment to recognize Jen Hughes, who passed away from leukemia at age 46 in September 2022. She was strong and fought her brave battle with cancer with a positive attitude. She lived life big and had a great passion for the causes she felt strongly about. Jen was a big Utes fan and was extremely competitive. Jen had a huge heart and organized ways to give back to other patients struggling with cancer. To help honor her legacy, Donate blood or check out her charity, Hugs from Hughes, on Instagram. Rest in peace, Jen. You will be deeply missed. 
Hey, you fans, welcome back to The Extra Point. We're joined by all-conference linebacker Karene Reed. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm good. Appreciate you guys having me on. Happy Thank you for coming. Here. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, it was a blast having your brother Gabe on last fall. He was stoked to play with you, and I know you were with him. You guys combined for 19 and a half tackles for loss last season, which led the Power Five and brother combos, I think, for defensive players. Is that right? Yeah, I think I heard that as well. <laughs> yeah. Of all time. Yeah, yeah. That'd be like an all-time record. Um, credit, give us a you know assessment. Obviously, the spring game is a spring game, right? It's a little watered down, but just of spring ball as a whole, uh, where do you see the team team at right now? Um, it's always tough because I feel like spring ball and fall camp, we're really only focused on the defense. Mm -hmm. It's not until the first game that we start coming together as a team. Mm -hmm. Every week is how can we get an edge on our own offense. And so speaking to the defensive standpoint, the biggest thing that I've seen this spring is, is consistency, mm. um, which is a really good sign. You know, last season we played some good defense, but I feel like we had our ups and downs. But it yeah. seemed like day in and day out, this spring ball was was very consistent. Kyle Beck. Uh, so your brother came on, and we he was a lovely guest to have last season, and he said that he was the fastest sibling out of the three, and you were number three. Is that still the case? <laughs> uh... uh <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a truthful podcast uh, here. Um, that's 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 got to be false. But be false. I respect his confidence. We, <laughs> all, we all need that confidence. Are you the number one fastest I, I, I am. Excellent. Yes, now, you came out of Timfew High School, local. I had the pleasure or the terror of coaching against you in high school when I was at Alta. If you could go back and tell your senior self at Timfew one thing, what advice would you give yourself? I would just tell him to uh, focus on what's what's most important. You know, I feel like what's helped me progress as a player and as a person is just focusing on things that matter more. Um, and I think my high school self would really appreciate that. Very nice. Very nice. Your father played for the Y, correct? He played both sides of the ball, offensive and defensive line. But I saw he had some exposure. Uh, my father just played linebacker. Oh, linebacker. Yes, sir. So I understand his freshman year was 94 when he played here, the 34-31 part two game. So your house was a blue household. Your brother played for Stanford Red before transferring here, and you're obviously Crimson Red. Was that a little offsetting, or was it an easy decision? You know what? Once, once my brother chose somewhere other than BYU, I think it was easy for, for me to do the same. So it wasn't too tough. And it, do you remember the feeling that you got when it was finalized that your brother would be joining you here in the Crimson in Rice Eccles? Yeah, it was crazy. We started uh, talking on the phone every day, daydreaming what it'd be like. Started uh, planning celebrations, which we never we never did do when when the moment came. But it was it was for sure special. That's a, and it was awesome to watch. Absolutely, absolutely. That. Yeah. Karina, you, you mentioned the consistency you saw in spring and coming out of that. What? What are you most looking forward to um, with this defense going into the season? What, what, what is the one thing that you think will be a little bit different maybe than last year's team? Um, I think just consistent on all three levels, D-line, linebackers, and, and DBs. I, I heard you talking about trying to fill that gap of Clark Phillips, yeah. who had mm -hmm. a lot of production for us. And yep. so um, each position group is going to have to pick up that slack, yeah. make, some, make some more plays because uh, – we don't have that superstar individual mm -hmm. as of right now, right? Yep. We still have a lot of time to improve, but uh, everyone's going to have to pick it up. As a defensive player, what do you love about playing for Coach Scally and, and especially Coach Witt? Um, I think one thing that stands out to me is he's become a lot more aggressive in his play calling, um, especially in the last the, the Pac-12 championship game. And since then, yeah. once spring started, he continued to drop stuff that, that I haven't seen in my three years. So I love how aggressive he is and uh, his creativity. What's been your favorite memory so far as a Ute? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, my, my first game probably is, is a big one when I had my first start against Washington State and then after that playing with my brother. So every year it seems like there's something that's re really been special and meaningful. Not the Pac-12 championship game. That one as well. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was oh, going to say, sure. so that's an obvious one, right? I yeah. mean, that was a shellacking, no question. Yeah. And my last question for you, Karine, is it takes so much effort, so much determination to get where you are as a collegiate player. Um, who inspired you to succeed and become the person you are today, as a, especially as a player off the field? Yeah. Um, I, would say, I would say two people. Uh, first, my wife. Um, 
the person that she is, I always strive to be that person. And then growing up as a kid, my parents, mm. you know? And so it's, it's always been about being better as a man first, and then second most important is getting better as a player. Now, being an educator, I've got to ask, with your extensively well track record with academic performance being on an honor roll, I wanted to know you have declared your major. You are now a business admin. Do you have any plans what to do with that after Life After Laces? I, I wish I had an answer for you on that. Um, I like business admin because I feel like there's a couple things within business I can do. And so, yeah, I haven't decided exactly what that's going to look like for now. Well, the world is your oyster, and go get it. Appreciate that. Karenny, thanks for coming on. We'll be right back. The Ken Garf Scholarship Club is the new home for elite fine dining on Salt Lake's east side. Perfect for Utah fans and customers who are looking for great food, specialty wines and drinks, and great views. Hey, you fans. Welcome back to The Extra Point. We've got a big treat for you today with Mr. Stevenson Sylvester. How are you doing, man? Doing great. I'm thanks, doing great. Thanks for coming on. Known for his Sugar Bowl and Poinsettia Bowl heroics. I just have to say, I'm one of those fans who watches the Sugar Bowl over and over again. <laughs> I can't. I was at the Sugar Bowl, and I can just tell you, on the first series with Alabama, it was third and fourteen. You come off a linebacker blitz, and you rock John Parker Wilson's world. I will. I will never forget that as long as I live. That was incredible. Um, you're a hero, as far as University of Utah football is concerned. Uh, we're we're glad to have you, and we just want to know to start off the segment. What are some of your favorite memories as a youth football player? Man, um, there's a lot. One, uh, the recruiting process, right? You know, uh, it, it came in in 2006, so the youths, of course, won the Fiesta Bowl in 04 and came off the Emerald Bowl. So they were a big name because Calvin Johnson was at Georgia Tech and how Weddle, like, shut him down and the whole team just went off in San Francisco for that for that bowl game. And then um, taking my visit, Brian Johnson was my first host. And then um, just meeting the guys, going through that whole deal, that was amazing for me. You know, I'm just like, Utah is awesome. This is great. Embrace is like, I was a zero-star athlete at the time. I got two stars because I came on my recruiting trip. <laughs> um, and um, just meeting Coach, Coach Whittingham coming to my high school classroom. You know, just the genuineness of this university and this program. It was just spoke volumes. It was the same way the entire time I was here. I love it. And, you know, um, getting ingrained into the community, understanding the people here. It's truly genuine and it's awesome. It's why I live here now, right? I decided to move back here is because of uh, just my experience here is just awesome. And um, it's just really what this university is all about. Speaking of you moving back, obviously, I was fortunate enough to play with you. Fly, how's it going? Um, for the viewers at home, walk us through kind of, you know, what you've been up to uh, since you got done playing. Obviously, you had some time in the NFL and, and kind of walk us through what you're up to now. Man, um, I think who I am now was really a tribute to what I've learned through the process here. Right. I am a busy body. I don't sit down. Like, my wife, we got up this morning and was like, man, the house is clean. What do we do today? Because <laughs> normally Sunday's the clean day. But, like, I'm a busy body, man. I, I'm, I'm running a tech uh, company right now throughout the week. And then I do a lot of analysts and consulting things on the weekend. I train kids um, that are going from college to, or from high school to college in that transition period. Uh, um, you know, for me right now, it's mostly my analyst stuff, which I love. All I can do is talk about football. Yeah, it's the best thing ever. It's incredible, his best thing ever. So a lot of radio shows, yeah. um, uh, a lot of TV uh, with KSL downtown is yep. awesome. Yeah. Um, and then coming up here and doing things like nice. this with you guys. Bef before we, I know Cal has some 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 good questions for you, but I think the hot topic, and we've discussed this many times, is NIL and college football. Right. And what are your thoughts on it? I know I have my thoughts. I've voiced them on the show. What do you think about it? How do you handle it? What's the university doing? Where do we go? Well, I mean, I think the NIL is a beast, right? It's it's an it's an animal. When you get money flowing the way it is, you're not gonna stop anything right. uh, in one night, yep. right? Um, for me, uh, I like to invest in the kids, and I think that's that's where I am yeah. with all of that. I don't feel like this really helps the kids' future. Sure. You know, so NIL, transfer portal, just the mentality that you get. And I take that just from my experience, right? Like, um, for me being 17, 18, 19 year olds, when I was here, I was 17, um, my first year here, and, and, and me getting the type of money and making those decisions coming from the background that I came where we didn't have anything, you know, and, and trying to make decisions yeah. and me going to the pros, right? That too, mm -hmm. understanding like, okay, I just got money. Mm -hmm. 
like imagine the calls that I'm getting. Yeah. Right. The scam artists, mm -hmm. the the marketing people ploying and, and prying on 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 the young brains and, and young people who just got money with no financial literacy. Right. That stuff bothers me, mm -hmm. right? And and so like that's where I'm thinking. But any you think about nil name engine, image and likeness. If somebody's making money off of my name, yeah. it better be me. Totally. Right. And so that's where, you know, you get two sides of the story. But I think that there needs to be better plans in place with all the money and resources that these universities, the NCAA organization, all these people have. You can put better plans in place to make sure that these guys leave here. Right. Because not everybody makes it to the pros. Yep. Right. You know, no. football isn't forever. They say that about the NFL. Right. And so, like, what can I do once I'm done with my four years of eligibility? Right. Am I going to take this short money? Right. Sure. I made one hundred thousand dollars. Right. What is that in today's days, yeah. right? You know, I can put a down payment on a house, but am I going to get a job afterwards that are going to be able to pay my mortgage daily? Am I going to be able to pay taxes? Am I going to be able to, to, to do all the things that I need to do and, and learn all the traits? Like, I didn't even learn how to take care of my home until I was sure. 30. Right. Right? No, these are all good points about I NIL. Like it's, so there's a know. lot of things that these kids aren't understanding when you're giving them the money at these yeah. ages and I feel like there's resources where you can put that education into their hands mm -hmm. so they know what to do with it when they leave. Sure. So do you feel like the NIL contributions or the focus is shifting that student to the athlete part of the student athlete and it's not letting them get that academic or that financial sense or focusing on why they're actually here to be a student athlete? And that's another caveat. Right. That's a big, big caveat. And one thing that I appreciate is my education, yep. my education from here. Right. And it's leading me to where I am here. And I just I don't feel like that is of any importance. Right. You know, I'm listening to coaches and um, how they go into recruiting. Education is no part of the conversation. It's how much money you can give me. What? So I'm a 17-year-old kid, <laughs> and their parents uh, and them are both talking about how much money you can give me instead of, like, where's my future? Like, there's no investment into these kids' futures. Which has been, which has been the essence of why people have come to play at Utah. Exactly. No doubt. No doubt. That exactly. That's what we've talked about and offline. And yep. Exactly. Talked about you, are, you are completely correct. That was a big reason why I came, too. Yep. You know, one, I, this was the best school that, that offered. <laughs> I didn't get to go. But two, um, just their values is what I value. And that was huge. And it wasn't on the athlete side of the student-athlete term. The family and, and aspect, the school aspect, the location, um, the community, as I said, uh, was very important to me. It was awesome. And, and those things just hit home. And what I hear about these guys going in and recruiting these kids, it's not the same conversation. Now, yesterday you had the chance to be in the booth to announce the game a little bit. And they did tease you about you being in Whittingham's first recruiting <laughs> class. And you said, we're not going to talk about those numbers. Okay. <laughs> you have, you've been experienced. You've been in the program. You were one of Whittingham's is, is his head coach, one of his class. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, do you remember the moment you decided to be a Ute? But I'm more curious now that you've mentioned the NIL, the feel of the family of being a Ute. You've mentioned it before. You still see it in getting stronger as momentum downhill as these more recruits keep coming in, regardless of the money that's being flashed around? Yeah, uh, for me, it, it was that investment, right? I told you Coach Witt came by my classroom um, in high school. Uh, that's a big moments for those kids, right? You know, you get a guy like Coach Whittingham. Um, You've you seen him on TV with the Fiesta Bowl for me back in my day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, and, and now you see Coach Whittingham on the stage. He's one of the top five coaches in, in all of, of, the, of the NCAA, right? He's a big name. And um, having conversations with guys like that, conversations with Morgan Scally, who are um, on that level, and for me, Gary Anderson, <clears throat> talking with guys like that and, and, and them telling you how you fit into what they do, mm. right? They have success. They, they built the model. They know what it looks like. And they're like, okay, those are people I want to follow, right? That's where my thing was just like, that's what I want to be. You know, I had scholarships from UNLV and Utah State. They didn't have that. Right. And so I'm just like, it just makes sense. And, and so that overwhelming feeling of family, community, um, um, leadership and, and success. It was a no brainer for me making a decision to come to Utah. Yeah, on that note, I have to ask, I know it's important for you to give back to the community. Right. And I know it has some connection to your upbringing. Could you talk a little bit about that slide? Yeah, well, um, 
I, ca- I come from a, a, a deep family, right? I, I grew up in the same house as my six cousins and my older brother. So there were eight kids, four boys, four girls. I was right in the middle. And the, four, and the girls that were older, they were mean. Right. And so, um, you know, everybody knows you got an older sister, older cousin, like they are, they are, they are mean. So they keep a strict your physique. Well, yeah. Well, honestly, <laughs> I didn't look like this. So I didn't look like this. That, I, seen the I did. The slide. I didn't. I did. You know, I, my metabolism was crazy. <laughs> but um, no, that, that came from my mom because anytime we got punished, it was push ups or crunches. Right. So if you're acting out in the store, give me 50 push ups right here in aisle seven. Right. <laughs> Give me push ups right here. Or when we get home, you get me 200 crunches with 200 push ups. And, and like and so like that was our discipline, too. Right. And so, of course, we played sports and we were all good. But that was all a part of it. My mom ran a really tight ship at home um, and, and she was a social worker. And so uh, one thing that we would do was always be a part of her um, activities that they did for the community. Right. And so, exactly, and sometimes we took foster kids in, so on top of the eight kids, we had other people filtering through, so it was a sense of, like, community. No matter what race you were, what age you were, whatever it was, you take care of people because that's humanity, right? And and so that was my mindset. It was just like, I'm a very uh, uh, social person. I, I love to talk to people. I love to hear stories. I love to um, uh, see what people's been through and, and if there was some way that I could relate, right? And if there was some kind of point there. And, and so, like, meeting people, and that's why this community of Utah is so amazing because you get stories and backgrounds from so many different people and then how people go about their business every single day. It's, uh, it's truly something to marvel at. Amazing. It's amazing. Great to have you on, Sly. Thank you so much. It's been our privilege be right back. Welcome back to the Extra Point, you fans. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, before we close, Cal, I think he has something to say about some of our latest champions at the University of Utah. Oh, the school the, of champions. That, the school. Right? We're in the Conference of Champions, and now we're becoming the school of champions. We've got men's lacrosse winning their conference championship title yesterday. Men's tennis closing out Pac-12 championship yesterday for the first time. Women's basketball, obviously. We can't forget the Red Rocks, our gymnastics teams, placing third in the NCAA championships. What was the streak that you were making? What a dynasty, 47 years years i think of being in the national championship i don't think that it doesn't get enough credit i mean that's absolutely amazing we've got women cross-country runners breaking school records and setting pac-12 championship uh, records on themselves it has been an amazing spring for uh utah athletics not just football i also wanted to mention my player of spring one of the most consistent players that always flies under the radar Mm. the radar jt greep the long snapper this man has been holding down his position for three seasons now and has been a force, but he never, never know it. Yep. He would never know it. Thanks, Cal. Uh, please check us out on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Apple Music, and please, please, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned for our next podcast, and go Utes. Go Utes. Go Utes. Okay, so it, but it felt good. Felt good. The content was great. Short enough. Kevin just want to move between them. <laughs> okay. Ready, Kevin? Yeah. Are we recording? recording? Yeah, let's do. Actually, I'll do a, a three, two, one, five. Okay. Guys are holding that. Three, two, one. Thanks, Kel. <laughs>